What is the very first thing that you do after you trim up your beard so you look a little bit less like a monkey or a dog's rear end? Well, you do the most insane tube amplifier shootout in the history of tube amplifier shootouts. That's what you do. Let's go. Knowing how much time and effort went into this video, I decided to break it up into chapters which you can navigate using the timestamps below. This way, if you're only interested in a part of the video and don't want or have the time to watch the entire thing and I can't blame you, this is gonna make it a lot easier to find what you want and move on with your happy audiophile life. And with that, Let's move on to the amplifiers and tackle this beast of a project. All right, first amplifier on deck, which is just over my shoulder with a starting price of $3,000. The Black Ice Audio F35 offers balanced connections and a dual chassis design featuring carbon fiber and mirror glass panels with LED backlit touch sensors. The Odyssey circuit designed in 2015 is a dual phase V drive circuit with EL34 power tubes. It pumps out 60 watts of tube magic while using the exact biasing VU meter. Changing over to the 6550 or KT power tubes, the F35 becomes 75 watts of dynamic force or 82 watts of KT150 power. When it gets late, the fun doesn't stop. Just press the headphone button and plug in your headphones without losing the tube quality sound with no op amp to get in the way. On the back panel, the F35 offers two balanced or single-ended inputs and two additional single-ended inputs. The amp offers left and right record outputs along with a single subwoofer output. To the right of this bank, the F35 offers binding posts for four or eight ohm speakers, power switch, and AC inlet. Included with this unit is a metal robust remote for controlling all parameters from the listening position, pre and power tubes, and of course, a power cord. Next up is this silver beauty just over my shoulder. With a price tag of $3,500, the Rogue Audio Cronus 3 is a 100 watt all tube amplifier that offers a number of improvements over previous generations. First, its completely redesigned phono stage can now accept moving magnet and moving coil cartridges and also includes user selected gain and loading options as well. The amplifier offers an ultra linear and triode switch in the back, which allows users to take full advantage of power and dynamics in the ultra linear mode or move in the direction of a softer or more romantic sound signature in triode mode. The line stage on the amp has been improved as well as grounding, which results in blacker backgrounds and a cleaner presentation across the sound stage. Another upgrade is the headphone section, which has been completely redesigned and it's based around MOSFET buffers and can drive the most demanding of headphones without breaking a sweat. Taking a look at the back, you will find upgraded speaker binding posts, the ultra linear triode switch, ground and phono connections, three single-ended line level inputs, along with both fixed and variable outputs. Included with the unit is an all metal robust remote, pre and power tubes, and a power cord. A lot of you guys are curious about this one over my shoulder. With a starting price of 34.50, the Galleon TS120 offers 30 watts RMS while in class A and 50 watts while in class AB. The unit is shipped with KT88 tubes, but can use equivalent tubes such as 6550s and KT120s. In either configuration, the amp comes with upgraded capacitors and slightly different tone palettes for different listeners. According to Galleon, the standard version is slightly smoother and offers a more robust bass while the special edition, like the one that we're talking about today, comes with Jupiter caps in the signal path and offers a more neutral presentation and cleaner bass. Taking a look at the back, the Galleon offers four line level inputs along with home theater bypass. To the right of these inputs, there is a tape out and subwoofer outputs as well. Below this bank, there is a toggle switch for changing the subwoofer outputs from mono to stereo and to the right binding posts that accept both four and eight ohms. 
Also included is a interesting switch for lug and grounding options, a toggle for power, and of course an AC inlet. Included with this unit is an all metal robust remote for controlling all the parameters from the listening position, pre and power tubes, and of course a power cord. On to the last guy that we're gonna be chatting about today with a starting price of $76.50, the Z40 Plus is the most powerful integrated amp in LTA's line. With up to 51 watts per channel, the LTA Z40 Plus is an output transformerless design using LTA's patented microzodal technology. With refined upgrades in the Plus version, the Z40 Plus offers greater capacitor storage, audio note resistors, a pair of subwoofer outputs, and an updated volume control with adjustable gain and high res settings. According to LTA, the Z40 Plus can easily drive speakers with sensitivity ratings at or above 85 decibels for critical listening, and for smaller rooms or non-critical listening, speakers down to 80 decibels sensitivity. Also according to LTA, the new Z40 Plus upgrade improves the tone and texture across all frequencies, and there is more detail and clarity around the performers. Taking a look at the back, the Z40 Plus offers tape monitor in and out, four single-ended inputs, and one XLR input. Below this bank, you will find upgraded speaker posts and stereo subwoofer outputs. To the right of this bank is a card slot for optional phono configurations, including moving magnet and coil cartridges for an upcharge. It's important to note, I haven't had the chance to take this phono section for a spin yet, but I will cover my impressions in the dedicated review. Included with the unit is an Apple branded remote for controlling all parameters from the listening position, pre and power tubes, and a power cord. Thank you for making it this far. This is where the rubber meets the road as we check out sound clips. First things first. The recording method used in these sound clips was captured using a matched pair of Earthworks QTC40s that were placed 30 inches away from the speakers on access to the tweeter. The speakers used for all the clips are the wonderful sounding Spatial Audio X4s, and the recorder used is a Zoom F8N. The audio was captured 24-bit, 48 kilohertz, and imported directly from the SD card into Final Cut Pro X. Careful attention was made to level matching, which was done by playing pink noise through each and every single amplifier, adjusting the volume until I hit exactly 80 decibels from the listening position using a decibel meter. In post, while editing, no effects, normalization, or compression was ever used on the music clips. The only thing that I did was just simply readjust the volume levels of each and every amplifier to get them as close to each other as I possibly can. I did this by locating a dynamic swing in a song taking note of the exact decibel peak in a final cut and use that peak to adjust the other amps when playing back the same song. As for song selection, there is no way in the world that I can please everyone out there, but I have a total of seven songs that I feel cover a wide range of music styles and genres. The order that you're gonna be listening is first, hearing the original recording from the artist and then the recorded amplifiers playing the same track back one at a time. Again, remember you can use the chapters in the video to skip from amp to amp or song to song if you don't want to sit through the entire video. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me I once was lost but now am found was blind but now I see T'was grace That taught My heart To fear And grace 
my fears relieved how precious did that grace appear the hour I first believed Amazing grace How sweet the sound That saved a wretch like me I once was lost but now am found was blind but now I see twas grace that taught my heart to fear and grace my fears relieved how precious did that grace appear the hour I first believed Amazing grace How sweet the sound That saved a wretch like me, I once was lost, but now am found, was blind, but now I see. Twas grace that taught my heart to fear And grace my fears relieved How precious dear that grace appear the hour I first believed Amazing grace how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me I once was lost but now am found was blind but now I see Twas grace That taught My heart To fear And grace My fears Relieved How Precious did 
that grace appear the hour I first believed amazing grace how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me I once was lost but now am found was blind but now I see T'was grace That taught My heart To fear And grace My fears Relieved How Precious did that grace appear the hour I first believed.
comes a time
Take me or leave me 
It's important to understand that what I'll be saying in this chapter of the video are all based on what you're going to be able to hear for yourself in the review. Working through how to construct this video, I really wanted more than anything to make this as interactive as possible. So in order to really understand where I'm coming from, I strongly suggest you at least reference the sound clip section of this video as well. Second, I want to be clear. My goal is to help you understand the differences from the four amplifiers and even call out things that I liked or didn't like about each and every single one of them. That is to say, these impressions aren't necessarily a full-blown review of the individual amps, but more concise and points that stood out between the four. It's my hope that this will help you quickly figure out which of these amps that you're most interested in, so when I do drop individual reviews of each one, you will already know which amp you are most interested in. And with that, let's get started. If I could come up with two words to summarize my overall experience with the Black Ice F35, those two words might be robust and musical. Regardless of its power rating, the F35 stood out from the crowd as the heavyweight champion when it comes to robust, deep, and powerful bass response. While using the 6550s and even the KT88s in the F35, you can be certain that bass authority, especially deep bass, is going to flood the soundstage in a quick hurry. Having two, yes, two of these amplifiers in-house for review, one being the stock unit, which is being discussed and used in the shootout, and another completely upgraded with NOS tubes, I can also tell you without hesitation, you can easily tailor the sound of this amp to your liking. The stock F35 is musical, and while I hate distilling everything that I love about this amp into such an ambiguous term, let me do my best to break this down. Starting from the top, the F35 reaches for cymbals and it smacks the snot out of them. It doesn't sound soft, it doesn't sound smooth, and it doesn't hold back. Presence, air, and attack are all part of its attitude, and the top end feels unleashed and it feels free. On the flip side, the upgraded version of the amplifier offers the top end that could be compared to warm butter dripping off a biscuit. All the crashes, smashes, and top end jagged edges are all smoothed out and sound more refined, like water's been rolling over sharp rocks for centuries, leaving them smooth as a baby's rear end. Now, since I'm focused on the stock unit today, let me get back on track and keep talking about how the F35 sounds right out of the box. Having listened to this amp on every speaker that I have in house, including some unusual suspects that my buddy brought over, anyone curious about how this amp sounds with a pair of Tecton double impacts? Well, let me tell you this. That same friend has heard every single amp that I'm chatting about today and hands down his favorite was the F35. Across the board, the tonal structure of the F35 is quite balanced, but over and over again, I kept noticing how robust and powerful it sounded. With musical being the second trait, I don't know how else to say it other than this amplifier, regardless of what the heck that I'm listening to, is just fun. I find myself getting lost in the music and the analytical side of my brain, it just, it gets beaten to a pulp with the F35's ability to just free the music. Soundstage is large, both deep and wide, and all the nuggets inside the stage all pop from the mix with great authority. So, anything about the amplifier that I don't like? From a tone perspective, no especially with the stock unit. Now with the upgraded F35, I need more time to sink my teeth into it and figure out, but for Sonics alone, the stock F35 is a winner in my book. As for functionality, there are two things that bug me about this amplifier. Unlike the other amplifiers, this thing seems to be super finicky with tubes. If the tube is not making perfect contact to the pins or senses a power fluctuation it doesn't like, the amplifier will just simply shut off. Because I've spent a lot of time tube rolling with this amplifier and even taken it to friends' houses for comparison listening, this feature on the amp has turned out to be a pain in the butt. 
Even now, I have the KT88s in here simply because I can't get the 6550s to play nice with this amp anymore. Now look, it's possible that one of those 6550 tubes is just simply bad, but either way, it's been a little bit of a headache. With that being said, the guys at Black Ice Audio have been super cool and responsive in troubleshooting these problems, and I am certain that anyone out there that runs into these hiccups they will treat you just as well as they have treated me. The second thing that I don't like about this amp is a mono output for subwoofers. Black Ice, what were you thinking? The rest of these amps that we're looking at all offer stereo sub outs, and I really wish I had seen the same on the F35. Going straight from the F35 to the Cronus, the first thing and the most obvious thing that you should be able to hear in the clips with a decent pair of headphones is all in the bass. Like I said, the F35 clobbers with deep bass and while the Cronus absolutely hits every bit as low as the F35, the bass and even mid bass sounds to me a bit tighter. While both amps sound punchy, the Cronus cleans things up a little bit with the deepest bass notes. Perhaps less fun for some folks and more honest to others, I don't think that this feedback is neither good nor bad. Through most of its mid-band performance, Sacrona sounds a lot like the Black Ice, and both are very musical and very engaging. As we enter upper mid-range, and it's very hard to hear on the clips, the Krona sounds a little bit more forward and tilted to me. Keeping in mind, there was never anything that I heard that I felt was offensive or fatiguing from the Cronus. It seems to me like female vocals and top end percussion just sounded a little bit more present than the F35. Besides these quick impressions, the built-in phono section is worlds apart from the OG Cronus that I reviewed a decade ago. It sounds dynamic, clear, and offers a great balance of detail and resolution. Anything that I don't like about the amplifier? When it comes to its sonics, no. From a technical or feature standpoint, I wish the Cronus offered both 4 and 8 ohm taps on the back of the unit. While it can be configured from the factory to either or, I do think that many audiophiles and hi-fi enthusiasts might have more than one pair of speakers they plan to use with the Rogue, and so having those dual posts would have been a nice inclusion. I also feel like the remote is a bit lacking. It's not as feature rich as either the Galleon or the F35. So having the ability to change inputs and things like that is on my wish list for future generations of the Rogue Audio Cronus amplifiers. Knowing this amp can be placed in class A or AB, I had a hard time deciding how I wanted to set up the Galleon for this shootout. But after listening to both options, I felt like Class A is what this amp is really about and offered up the traits that I admired the most about its performance. To my ears, its bass performance sits somewhere in between the stock F35 and the Cronus. Meaning, the bass isn't the tightest of the bunch, but it also doesn't hit with the heaviest hand. Knowing good and well that I'm working with less power than the Cronus or F35, one might think that the Galleon is gonna sound thin or weak, but that is hardly the case. Especially in bass and mid bass, the Galleon hits hard enough to make me completely forget about spec sheets and just simply turn up the music. Climbing into mid band, this is where I believe most hi-fi enthusiasts will appreciate this amp, especially in class A. While I tend to think that manufacturers toss out marketing slogans like hyperbolic candy, I'll say that the included manual with the Galleon perfectly described my experience when listening to this amplifier. Instruments and vocals will pop out of the music more in class A. Can I get an amen? Because ladies and gentlemen, that's exactly what I heard. So, with a robust bass that punches above its weight class, mid-range that pops out from the mix, what about the top end? Well, I'm gonna make the argument that it's not completely unleashed and doesn't offer, hear me, 100% of the top end in every single track. What I do hear is refined and smooth. While not as oozy or buttery as the upgraded version of the Black Ice F35, 
the top end of this amp seems to sit somewhere in between all of these amps and especially the upgraded F35. Cymbal hits still ring out and are ballsy, and that's a good thing, but the most jagged edges that quite frankly, I don't miss are easier to digest. Knowing there are Jupiter caps inside this thing and knowing that there are also Jupiter caps in the upgraded F35, it does not surprise me at all that their top end share a similar tone print. Onto the LTA, for those that have a hard time catching this in the sound clips, I will reassure you that it's much more obvious in person. This amplifier sounds different than any of the other previous amps that we've talked about today. Now, before we get to that, for one, the Z40 Plus takes all of these amps biasing options and it points at them and it laughs, it laughs at them like a big old meanie because there is no need to bias a Z40 Plus. That's right, you just, Toss in the tubes and you are good to go. Yes, you pay twice the price of any of these amplifiers for this feature, but I'll be the first to admit, it's as nice as it gets. As for how it sounds, with EL34s, the LTA will have you wondering why all of these amps that accept EL34s sound so warm, romantic, or smoky club-like when that is the last words that come to my mind when describing how the Z40 Plus sounds. Being specific, the mid-range on the Z40 Plus is very clean and precise, which is why this amp might have you second-guessing your sanity if you heard it back-to-back -back with any of these other amps with 34s in there. Vocals and anything female vocals sounded very clear and concise and offers plenty of resolution and details in the vocals. Bass and mid-bass is probably the thinnest and lightest sounding of all of these amps and surely doesn't pack the same heavy-handed punch of any of them, but does sound nice at moderate to moderately loud listening levels. For a frame of reference, what I consider moderately loud is up to 95 dB, and folks, that is very, very loud. Like, that's, <laughs> that's, that's very loud, so I'm, nitpicking here. The top end or treble response on the LTA is also smooth, but not quite as smooth sounding as the Galleon or upgraded F35, probably closer sounding to the Rogue or stock F35. This is more of a true to the recording top end with just a little bit of the upper mid range or lower treble shaved off. Now I should mention, and I've already talked about this in previous videos with the Z40 Plus, I do feel like that top end is a little bit thin sounding, but LTA did send me out some KT77, so I'm gonna be swapping those out for the EL34s to find out what are the differences there and see what kind of mileage that we're able to gain back with both bass response and top end extension. So hang tight as I finish out this review and then I will report back to you guys when I'm done with the Z40 Plus. Besides that, and everybody on planet Earth knows this, I've already talked about it a lot. I'm not a big fan of LTA's use of an Apple remote, especially when considering the price of the amplifier. Knowing that we have three other amplifiers in this shootout that took the time to make all metal remotes that work great with their amplifiers, I would imagine that many folks out there would wish that they got the same thing from LTA that matches their attention to detail with their amplifiers topology. Wardrobe change. The truth is, is that it's been about a week since I shot this video and I felt like we needed some final thoughts. First, I'm gonna be honest that while I can hear some subtle differences in the sound clips, I have to remind myself that I know how all of these amplifiers sound in person, which is obviously helping me know exactly what to listen for. It's my hope that this long-winded insanity might have helped some of you guys at least get an idea of which of these four amplifiers should be on your radar. I am curious to see how this video is received by you, and I would love to know if you found that there is a clear winner for you in this shootout. As for me, you probably noticed I had nothing to nitpick about the Galleon amplifier simply because 
It's left me scratching my head. Honestly, so far in the review process, I got nothing. The feature set is fantastic, the connectivity is impressive, and the sound of the amp is hard to complain about. Also, my listening impressions were based on the amp in Class A only, and I'm going to be the first to admit, even though that I mentioned it doesn't quite offer 100% of the top end in Class A, which I don't think that it does, it absolutely does get you there while in Class A B. Again, this just goes to show that beyond just swapping tubes to get a different sound, the Galleon does stand out as probably the most versatile amp amongst the bunch, and in my opinion, covers the most ground for someone who doesn't know exactly what they want out of a tube amplifier. Last but not least, thank you, truly thank you, for watching this long, insane video and for stopping by. Make sure that you remember to subscribe and for crying out loud, I need a cup of coffee. And with that, I'll see you tube-loving audiophiles in the next video.